Okay, so we've got to start our more, do more with the uh, topic that we were just talking about, which is rational expressions. And it is R6 in your book. So let's put that on top, rational expressions. And let's call this B. Now we did it, we done some problems involving this already, but now they, let's see this type of problem. This one involves a radical, but it also has to do with reducing and simplifying. So you, let's say you have eight plus two square root of seven. It's just a relatively straightforward problem. Let me call problem number one for our purposes here. Divided by four. Here's what you gotta notice. Remember that we said that this is a regular number. This of course you can see is a regular number and so is this. Ignore the square root of seven. As long as all three of these numbers and if, if the, um, they are divisible by the same number, then you must simplify and divide it. So we can notice that, of course, two goes into two, into eight, and into four. So that's our next step. We've got to real, realize that we could put two into all three of those things. Eight becomes four. Divide eight by four, it becomes four. Two divided by two is one, so you don't even bother writing anything. There's an invisible one there. And then after that, four divided by two is two, and then you've got the story completed. So it's important to notice anything like this happening, that there's a number that will go into all of the pieces, all of the normal numbers. <clears throat> okay, now let's get into something really actually even more important. Let me, let me, the, the problem that we need to do is going to look like this. But I'm going to have to go into an, a, into an aside and then a tangent to discuss something important involving this problem. First, let me put up the problem. 14 minus 2x divided by x squared minus 7x. Okay, let me go over to here to uh, scrap paper and discuss the following. What if, what if you have um, x plus seven, x, minus, x minus 7 over 7 minus x. All right, let me show you what we could do with 7 minus x. If I multiply 7 minus x times negative 1, right? Or notice that this is, a, this is 7, that's negative 7, this is negative x, and x, that's, ne that's x. If I multiply negative 7, 7 minus x times negative 1, right? I multiply both. Let's see what I get. I get negative 7 plus x, which is the same thing as x minus 7, right? Put x here and minus 7. Notice that x minus 7 and x minus 7 are the, are the same thing. So, x minus, instead of negative 7 minus x, if I multiply it times negative 1, I get x minus 7. So I could write this, x minus 7, right, that this is equal to negative 1 times x minus 7, right? And what's x minus 7, x mi uh, minus 7 is equal to 1. So what's negative 1 times, times positive 1? negative 1. The whole thing turns out to be negative 1. So if you ever see an x, x, and on the bottom there's a negative x. On the top there's a negative 7, and on the, on the, on the bottom there's its, it, there, there's its opposite, the 7, right? The 7 versus the negative 7, the negative x versus the x. You see that? Then you know that this actually will turn into a negative 1. That's pretty important. Let's see, let's see it in action over here in this problem. Let's factor the top. We know how to factor the top. Get the GCF. The GCF, 2 goes into 14, 2 goes into 2, so I bring out the 2. 2 goes into 14 7 times, and 2 goes into negative 2x. I don't really have to do this, but I'll do it over here anyway. Negative 2x divided by 2. We've done it a bunch of times already. So negative 2x divided by 2 turns into negative x. That's the top. Okay, what's on the bottom? I also can get the GCF out of there. X goes into X squared and X goes into X. Take the smallest of the X's, bring it out. All right, X squared divided by X is X. And X into negative 7X, let me use my scrap paper over here. Negative 7X divided by X cancels. I get negative 7. Look at the phenomenon that we have over here. This X is the opposite of negative X and negative 7 is the opposite of 7. This whole thing is worth 
negative 1. It's like saying 2 over x times negative 1. What's 2 over x times negative 1? Negative 2 over x. You can put the negative on top. You can put the negative on the bottom. Nobody does. Or what they, mostly people do is they put it in the middle. Negative 2 over x. Here is the final answer to this problem. Remember this. If they're opposites of each other, both of them, you can turn it into a negative 1. Simply multiply whatever you have uh, on the other side of it by negative 1. That is, this is an important thing. This is an important piece to tell you. Important piece of information. Okay, so let's move on to more about the stuff that this rational expressions wants us to, wants us to know about how to, how to handle. Let me see. Wow, ran out of space very quick. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try to see if I can't get a second piece of paper. Let's see. On the same video, that would be great. There we go. We got it. Okay, so here's the situation over here. What if you have, this is from R6 again in your book, and it's called rational expressions and more operations on radicals. We just saw some radicals. Here's more mostly expressions. What if you have to contend with the following problem? Let me call problem number one again. 2xy, 2xy over x squared y plus 3xy. All right, and that is a multi, this is a multiplication, this is multiplying rational expression, expressions. Multiplying rational expressions. It's all part of the business about rational expressions. What does this, this want us to multiply? It wants us to multiply x squared plus 6x plus 9 over 4x plus 12. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we have to, uh, we have to factor everything that moves here if we can. 2xy is only one term, so we can't factor that. But we can factor this. So if we can factor it, we must factor it. Let's see what happens. All right, I can take out the GCF. I can take out the GCF out of here. These, there's an x squared and then an x. What do I do? Take the smallest one, x. There's a y and there's another y, the same y. So bring out the y. I'll reserve some space for scrap paper, even though some of this we could do in our head already. But let's do stuff on scrap paper. That means let's take, let's take over here the x squared y, x squared y, and divide it by the GCF xy. And let's take the 3xy, 3xy and divided by the uh, GCF xy. What happens? These are gone. x squared over x is x. And on this one, these are gone. These are gone. And all I have is a positive 3. Okay. xy times x plus 3. Multiply times, what about factoring this? We have, we, this is actually, you can do this the long way. You can do it with the riddle, the 9 and the 6, the riddle. Or you can notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. Take the square root of x squared, you get x. This is my scrap paper section. Take the square root of 9 and you get 3. Multiply it by 2 and you get 6x. It's got all the symptoms. So the, the shortcut way of factoring it is the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3 positive 3, and it's all positive because this thing is positive, so everything's positive. So I'm going to write both copies down. I could either write it as x plus 3 or x plus 3 squared. I'm going to write both for the moment. Okay, what about 4x plus 12? Can I take the GCF out of that? Yes, 4. 4 goes into 4 and into 12. Bring the, bring the 4 out. 4x divided by 4 is x, and 12 divided by 4, I don't need the scrap paper for this, is x plus 3. Okay, what can we do with all of this stuff? He let's cancel every numerator and denominator that matches. This matches. They're gone. X plus 3 and X plus 3, numerator and denominator, matches. Gone. X and X, gone. Y and Y, gone. 
What's left standing? And this is not going to be left standing for long. Two over four are the only survivors over here. But that's reducible into equals one half. The final answer for seemingly a complicated problem is one half. That's it. Okay, that's a case of multiplying rational expressions. What about, let me move the paper up. What about dividing? What if we have to divide rational expressions? Let me show you what I mean, right? Dividing, dividing rational expressions. Okay, let me show you an example. The example is as follows. follows. What if you have 7x minus 7y over x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus y squared? So now, you, if we, if we, um, well, th I'm sorry, we're not finished. I, I didn't finish the problem. Divide. There's a, that, that's the first one. Divided by 21x. I didn't finish the problem. I'm sorry. There's a little bit more to go. x squared minus xy. Now that's the full problem. That's dividing division of rational expressions. How do you do it? All right. Here's what you do. You leave the numerator that turns into this follows. Your first step is, it's not going to be complicated. Don't worry. 7x minus 7y over x squared. Just repeat, just rewrite this whole thing. x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, now, then put the multiplication sign. Either put a little dot, put a little dot, or put the multiplication sign, whatever you're comfortable with. And now... Flip this and then multiply. Put the x squared minus xy on top. Put the 21x on the bottom and you're good to go. Don't even, don't even think about the past. This is now what you have to do. If you solve this problem, you, if you solve this problem, you've solved this problem. All we got to do is solve this exactly like we solved the problem up top over here, which is we have to relentlessly um, uh, factor to get it all broken down. So what does this say? This says x squared minus, I don't know if you can read it so well, I'm sorry, minus xy. x squared minus xy. All right, so let's factor the top, this one, the new, the left, upper left. So 7 comes out, 7 comes out as the, as the uh, GCF, 7 goes into 7x, seven uh, x times, right? Seven x divided by seven is x. And minus seven y divided by seven is minus uh, y. Minus y, plain old minus y. Okay, so that is going to, the, the other part of that on the bottom is going to be x squared minus two xy plus y squared. We're gonna continue this into the next video. Uh, but I want to show you one more thing, and I'll, and I'll pick it up. I'll, I'll start over again in the next video, no problem. But I want to show you what's happening over here. Perfect square left, perfect square right. And what's this in the middle? Let's take the square root of x squared, which is x. The square root of y squared, which is y. And multiply it times negative 2. What do you get? You get minus 2xy. That's what this is. This is a perfect square trinomial in a little disguise. All right, I'm going to re, I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to start over again. Don't worry, but I ran out of time on this video. And space.